Well, hello, everybody. It's Brother Todd with your Victory Minute, and I hope you guys and gals out there are all having a great day. If you've been catching the Victory Minute over the last few days, you know we've been talking about the aspect of consistency, and consistency, especially in the home. This consistency, especially in light of children, grandchildren, and those kinds of things, and giving them a balanced um, uh, experience, okay, and giving them an approachable person. Um, consistency will, will revolutionize every aspect of your life, whether it's got to do with your work or whether it's got to do with even hobbies or, I mean, even something as, as trivial as that. Uh, growing, being the same, being consistent, being steadfast, moving forward, uh, uh, being consistent as we've talked a lot about in mood, in message, talked about that probably too long yesterday today won't be as long but uh but today i want to talk to you about the thing that really wraps the whole thing up and i, I use the word consistency and motivation and i could eat just about as easily talk about priorities of being consistent in where you prioritize things but 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 what makes us prioritize a person uh, a thing is it, that, that is motivated, and it's motivated by something that we all know and love, and it's love. It, we couldn't live without love, right? But love is just like any other, any other thing that God gives. It can, be, it can be used to its fullest, or it can be used in a negative way. And you say, what do you mean, Brother Todd? How can love be used negatively? Well, when it comes to consistency, what will get in your way is when you love yourself more than others, more than the Lord, more than others, and it, and it, and it, and it, to the point that it is a detriment to them because it creates in us a selfishness. Think about when Jesus gave the great commandments, okay? They were asking Jesus about what's the greatest commandments and, and, and those kinds of things. And Jesus said something, and what he said, he, he gave two commandments, and he said, if you've got this, then you understand the whole word of God. In fact, he said, on these hang all the law and the prophets. What did he say? He, 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 he quoted from, from old scriptures. He, talked, he said, love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Now stop there and think about that a minute. What's he using as the measuring stick? Love God with all of what? With all of who? Ourselves. My mind, my heart, our body, every, everything that's in who? Within the individual, okay? Then he, he, he puts a capstone on it and says, and love your neighbor as your who? As yourself. If, because God knows us and he knows our desire to love ourselves and take care of ourselves is something that he put us in, in us and it's very strong. We just don't want it to get out of balance. If you really think about it, the idea of self-preservation, okay, it comes from our self-love, okay? We are concerned about ourselves. That's the reason we get up and eat. Okay, because we're concerned about ourselves. Okay, the, 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 that's, that's not wrong. God made us that way. The problem is, is when we get it out of kilter. Okay, and we, when we get it out of kilter, we don't set good priorities. When we put ourselves at the top of everything, it makes us extremely selfish. Okay, you'll see people do this in their relationship with God. You'll, you'll see it within their, like their service and those kinds of things. You know, God makes no bones about it. I'm number one. I'm number one. Somebody said, Brett Todd, no, my family's number one. Mm -mm. No, I'm telling you what, if you'll put God number one, you will not have any problem loving your family as well or better than anybody on this planet. That's the second one, to love your neighbor as yourself, to love those that God has around you with that same level uh, and intensity of love, okay? We're suffering like right now. You know, the, the, the greatest example of love in, in our world has always been a mother's love, okay? And there's always been bad mamas out in the world. But we're living in an age today where frankly, I think it maybe even is a majority, and I know I may be being harsh here, of, of, of mamas that love their kids. It's not as much as they love themselves. Now, I know that's a pretty harsh statement. And I hope it's not true. But I see lots of decisions made at the expense of children for the individual. And the justification behind it a lot of times is, well, you know, you know I've got to take care of me. Amen. God put that in us. 
we have to make sure we have to take care of ourselves again or we won't get anything done as it affects our own life but do you, but are you catching where I'm talking about it's fine to lo love and take care of yourself physically mentally emotionally right spiritually but you have to recognize that that has to be put into the context of sacrifice of selflessness uh, my old granddaddy had been gone a long time now and uh, they came up hard and uh, poor they had they were they were devastated by the uh, depression uh, his his granddaddy and owned a bank and all of that just got completely wiped out and they that, that he grew up during the depression and they were having to farm and all this kind of stuff and even, even share crop and all this kind of kind of horrible situation and the and, and all he ever talked about when he talked about his mama was her sacrifices her sacrifices in fact I had an uncle that was gone to the uh, civilian conservation corps for a long time and they put them all in a room one day and World War II broke out and uh, and they walked through there and said everybody in here uh, whose name is from A to N you're all in the army and everybody from N to P y'all are all in the Navy and uh, all you R's and he was a Roberts uh, you're uh, you're in the Coast Guard and so he went from the CCC's into the Coast Guard well anyway it was a number of years he sent back money home for his parents to use from the whole time he was gone, probably seven, six or seven years in the CCCs, and then the, the from 1942 until 1945, he sent money home. So when he gets home, to make a long story longer, he gets home, and Granny goes out there to the chicken coop where she had the money hid, money kept her money hid because she didn't trust banks anymore, um, and she handed him every dollar that he had ever sent home, and he said, "I sent that home for y'all to, to." to take care of housekeeping. And she said, well, we didn't need it. Well, in truth, they did need it. But she kept every penny at her own expense. She had money she could have used. And I'm telling you what now, I mean, they were living hard now. I'm telling you, they knocked, trying to knock a living out of them, them Trinity River Blackland Bottoms over in Ellis County. And I'm telling you, hard. And, uh, well, he had that money. He had that money. It was his nest egg. And if you want to know the long story of it, uh, he left this planet he was worth a lot of money and like you always say it because i own my land i wasn't paying rent for it because that's what he went and bought with it was land anyway you see what i'm talking about the sacrifice she never ever even thought about using a dime of that why she loved my uncle buck more than she loved herself and the sacrifice all through her life was that consistent and that's where i want you to stay it's, it's easy to fluctuate. It's easy to fluctuate. And so you have to really set a standard of what and who do you love. And if you want to know, if you say, Brett Todd, how would I really know if I'm loving God? Look for sacrifice. Time, talent, treasure. If, how, would I really, how do I really know if I'm loving my family? Because, you know, y'all, those of y'all that know me, you know I'll bust these men real hard. I, I don't like whiny men. And, uh, uh, I mean, I like the guys, but I just I don't like the aspect of it. And, you know, if you come to this church, if you're ever around me, I hear some dude say, I need I need some me time. In fact, it's a running joke here. They'll, they'll, they'll put on helmets and start running because I'm coming after that statement. The truth is, we all have to have time for self. We all have to, we all get, I mean, it's a good life. We all to enjoy it. Do some things that you like. But what I mean by me time is that time for me at the expense of others that I have put on a higher priority in my life. You know how many times my plans have been changed things that I've wanted to do, I get that one day a month, I'm gonna go do what I want and a funeral come up. And I've never told, I don't tell no family, maybe if I don't even know them. Oh, I can't do that, I got, you know, I got this or that. I don't ever jockey stuff like around like that. Why? Because we have to love our neighbors, ourselves. Them people are hurting. Them people are in difficulty. I always think to myself, man, what would I do if that was my mama? What would I do if that was that my brother, okay? And so the priority allows me to be consistent. And so in, in my decision making, I hope this is making sense. I feel like I'm kind of rattling around a little bit. When you've, when you've established your priorities based out of the motivation of love in your life, 
then you then you see what you do as your for your kids as something that's for them. It's something you're doing out of love. It's something you want to do and not, oh, I always got to do this. Oh, it's always about them. Oh, it's always about her. Oh, it's always my husband. He's always this and this and this. I'm not saying don't set up some good boundaries, but when if you just look at how I was how I was talking, and we hope the air conditioner coming on won't, won't bother us too bad here, but but I hope you're kind of following. Look at the way I kind of said that, that mopey, sad. Well, what is that? That's mood. And what did we talk about the other day? Consistency and mood. Okay. I know I've been rambling too much. And I'll guarantee you I'm going to look at this little clock on this thing. Yeah. I was going to try to give y'all this in five minutes, and I'm almost at 11. I guess I just can't help but talk too long. Last night I was going to preach 45 minutes, preach for an hour and a half. But anyway, <coughs> just talk too much. <laughs> but, uh, but hopefully this, this, this helps. Hopefully this, this whole little three-part series, if you're just catching today, go back and catch the other, okay? Because that's where we really kind of lay in the foundation of this aspect of consistency, all right? Be consistent in your mood. Be consistent in your message. Make sure your life mirrors you, what you say you believe. And, 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 and recognize that God's given us good things and good relationships in our life, and they're worth loving. Okay, and if we can love it like we love ourselves, if we can, if we can just just inch them right up there ahead of ourselves, then guys, we're going to love the people around us and our life in a great and in a mighty way. And nothing, nothing, makes children stronger than knowing they are loved to the point of sacrifice. Well, hope you have a great day. It's getting pretty cloudy. I can't even see myself in this little old camera right now, and so I'm gonna dodge this rain. Love all you guys, and I do hope that you have a great, great week and weekend as it comes up. And uh, make sure you're in church somewhere, okay? Have a great day. Bye-bye.